Okay, so we've talked uh, about a few different ways to find products, mostly on um, helium 10 um, black box, okay? But uh, we can actually find a lot of great product ideas through the magnet tool, all right? So uh, you're just gonna come right here on tools, come to magnet, um, and really what I want is I wanna provide many different ways to find product ideas, not just one way. If everyone does just this one way, then everyone's gonna be listening to the same stuff, right? So I wanna show you very uh, a lot of very different ways. And within this way, there's still a ton of different words that you can test. So for example, on this tool, I wanna to come up with, um, especially if you, are, if, you are, if you have already launched a product, uh, start with that idea. But if you haven't, start with something that you've recently bought on Amazon or maybe uh, come up with a random word or the last or like something in your room. Okay. And we're going to just go with it and we're going to find keywords around that product. So uh, it says enter a keyword. So I'm going to go ahead and type in disco ball and let's see what we get. So we'll just go into where it says get keywords. And we're going to basically cut down uh, the, the, the number of options that we have to find very specific niche product ideas. Cause if you come back here, we want to find products or keywords, like I said, that have a search volume of at least a thousand. Uh, we want the average revenue to be anywhere from six to 15,000. And we want the average review count to be at the most 300. Now, other things to, to, to consider is the Cerebro IQ score. Uh, the CPR, which is basically like how many products you'd have to give away to rank to the top of page one, even though that this number is not exact, usually it's very generous. You don't have to give away that many products to get to the top of page one. And then we want to look at the number of competing products, which I'll make a note in here is at most uh, 2000 really. Okay. So uh, we type in disco ball and we get 6,200 filtered keywords. So we need to filter some of these out. And the first thing I want to do, and there's so many different cool like filters on here. And like I said before, don't feel like you have to do exactly like I say, like, you know, change it up, right? Instead of uh, a thousand search volume, let's do 300, right? For this one. Eventually we want to work up to a thousand, um, but you know, feel free to, to change these numbers up. But just to start filtering out these keywords, let's apply at least 300 and that'll drop our number all the way from 6,200 down to 731. The next thing I wanna do is uh, most likely these uh, columns have been up here in the front, but I wanna, I wanna shift the columns that I feel like are the most important to look at in the very front. So the first thing I'm gonna move is right up here is the Magnet IQ score. And then I want the search volume right behind that. Um, yeah, this is eventually cool to have, but for right now, no. Uh, and then let's add in the CPR and the number of competing products. And let's just go through all of these real quick. Okay, Magna Q score is the score based on the ratio of estimated search volume versus number of competing products. A high score means a relatively high number of searches compared to a low number of competitors. So is the Magna IQ score is almost, it's, it's almost acting like our average, our, our, it's, it's acting as if, um, it's comp it's showing the number of uh, of how competitive the, the keyword is. So unfortunately, as you see, these we don't see the average review count on here. We don't see the average revenue. We're gonna have to look at those later. But the Magna IQ score is a good way to detect competition. It's ba I like to think of it as the search volume divided by the number of competing products, something like that. Uh, where in essence, the bigger the Magna IQ score the better, like the, the less competitive, the uh, lower this number, the more competitive it is. All right. Um, search volume, uh, number of times a keyword is search month on Amazon given uh, CPR estimated number of units that need to be sold over eight days resulting from a search for this keyword in order to ring to the top of page one. So that's like saying, oh, you need to give away 
48 units when you launch over eight days consistently so that you can rank to the top of page one. Um, that's not exactly true. I've launched a product where the CPR was 600 and I did not have to do that many giveaways. And then the number of competing products, I would say it's best to let, uh, like have anything not exceed, have the summer not exceed 2000. Uh, okay. So, um, where should we go from here? So what we want to do really is I actually want to rank, let's rank by the magnet IQ score. So let's, let's basically, I'm going to click this and it's going to show the highest, um, IQ score down to the lowest. So disco ball planter. So this is a, like, I, I've actually seen this product before. This is a really good keyword. Literally the first one that we just found. If we open up x-ray. Uh, okay, search volume 17,000. Average revenue is 5,800. And the average review count is only 59. This is a killer keyword, right? So that was, that literally took us two minutes. So I would definitely put that in my uh, potential product. So add to my list, let's just say, create a new folder. Potential products. All right. Uh, disco ball. So just looking through page one, I could see that the review count is pretty high. So really good search volume, average review count is high. Um, but if we look on here, uh, you know what? I'm sure that there's a different way that we could say disco ball that would attract the same search volume, but not be so competitive. So different ways that people are tight are looking for disco balls on Amazon is by typing in disco ball, galaxy projector, uh, party supplies, star projector, Halloween, and then here we have even more keywords. Uh, anyways, I'm not filling this keyword, but as we kind of keep looking through here, like let's actually change and let's rank by search volume. And let's set the number of competing products to 2000. Cool. So our list is down to 350 and um, let's see, happy light, uh, plasma ball. Okay. I really like this low number of competing products. Oh, heck yeah. This has FBA written all over it. Let's check it out. Okay, so now we want to make sure that there's not too high of a review, a review count and we want to make sure that the, that the average revenue is worth our time because it says that that basically shows that if we launch the same product, we can bring to the top, we can make that much money as well. Okay, um, average revenue is super, super good, but the review count is super, super high. But let's see if there's any outliers. And you know what, there's a couple on here that are just like really tank, like killing it. And even if we took these four or five guys out, because honestly, this guy only has 133 reviews and he's doing about 2200 a month in sales. Not that great. What about this guy? He's doing 3,400. If we take those guys out, the average review count still doesn't go down. So I still feel like this has potential. So are there any other ways that we can say this uh, keyword and or this product that may generate the same um, demand, but not as competitive? 
So like um, Lava Lamps for Kids, Plasma Ball, Dragons, This is a cool product. So let's, you know, same process again. Let's, let's, let's see what the average review count is and see if the search volume is, is good enough. So real quick, I, I only want to look at the price. I don't want to look at any of these. So really all I'm looking at is the review count, the revenue, the sales, and the price. Actually, let's move that here. Okay, so revenue, these guys are really doing great. And you know what? The review count, yeah, like this guy is killing it. But you know what? This guy only has 41 reviews and he's doing $23,000 in sales a month. Like this is a really good keyword and I've never found this one before. So if I take this guy out, that still doesn't drop, but I also don't wanna count these sponsored products. So, also, let's just like clean up this list. So this is not a lava lamp for kids. So it doesn't apply to this listing. So I could take that one out too. Um, this is not a lava lamp for kid as well. And, you know, so I take those guys out too. Ah, okay, well, unfortunately, like our average review count is still really high, but like my theory is if these guys have 41 reviews and they're at the top of page one for this keyword, like if they could do it, so can you honestly, like there's no reason why you couldn't rank up. Like I've done, it, I've seen other people do it. So it's possible. So like that gives us hope. The only other concerning thing is like, Sometimes when this average review count number is so high, it it, uh, it usually means it's going to be way too hard to get up to the top page one to rank that high. But like I said, if if there's still lots of other, um, you know, and, and it's just like products like product like these, like that Amazon is pushing on to this keyword that doesn't really have to do with the actual keyword phrase um, that kind of messes up the average review count number. So Anyways, I still think this is a good keyword, frankly, because I see lava lamps for kids up by the top of page one and their revenues are killing it and the average review count isn't that very high. And so they were able to outsell these other guys that have a lot more review counts for whatever reason. Um, and so now what I would do next is also is still try to find other keywords that you could say, uh, other ways to say lava lamps for kids Okay. But as far as for now, as far as like generating product ideas, I like that one. Okay. Let's keep on going.